I believe that the figure bird in the cage is African American uh, originally. There, I can't find any dance in the European tradition that has an individual dancer improvising within a ring. And yet that is very, very common in African dances. And in this country, um, all the slave dances were basically like that, a, a ring with an individual dancer improvising and dancing like a bird. There are uh, the, uh, the various bird imitation dances that come from the African tradition. If you look at the southern, southern music, we have the main instruments uh, were the fiddle of, you know, Northern European uh, brought it over, uh, but then the African-derived banjo and the combination of the banjo with the African banjo with the European fiddle is really what made the music distinctive. And I see a similar thing with the dances in that uh, I believe that the first dance callers were African American that the dance calling comes from the African tradition. Uh, there's a very strong tradition in Africa of call and response. And uh, all, you know, back as early as 1690, slaves were playing fiddles for white people's dances um, before you had, um, uh, obviously before you had recorded music. Uh, to, be a, to be a musician was a, a service position and if uh, surely white people played fiddles but slaves realized that if you knew how to play the fiddle you wouldn't be working in the field but you would be playing for the dances in the big house and not just slaves but free blacks played fiddles too and you were in a in a different strata there are hundreds of instances that I could cite of slave fiddlers and free blacks playing the music for white people's dances. And think of it like this: if if you're um, if you're going to have if you're just going to have a dance in your house for your family and friends, you you might play the fiddle your music yourself. Um, just like if you're going to um, have friends over for supper, you might cook the meal yourself. But say it's a bigger event like uh, a wedding, you hire a caterer. You have somebody else do the cooking. And the same thing if it's a public dance or in the South, plantation balls, obviously, the musicians were invariably black. And this is true for 200 years. And the, these black musicians uh, learned the European dance tunes so they could play the European uh, fiddle. Um, and, uh, you know, many, many slave advertisements, you know, slave for sale, plays the fiddle really well. Uh, uh, notes of runaway slaves played the fiddle. You see those all the time. And um, dancing masters owned slaves. They didn't have a boombox. They had a slave who could provide the music for their dancing schools. Mm -hmm. And as early as the 1700s, there are references to slaves in the South doing country dances and cotillions. And the slaves didn't go to dancing school to learn those things. And the only way they could have done them is for somebody to be prompting them. The white people did not have, I mean, sure, the dancing masters may have prompted their students in dancing school, but at a public dance, it wasn't something you did. You learned the figures at dancing school, then you went to the ball. And um, the very first documented dance callers were all African-American musicians. The earliest I know about is 1819 in New Orleans, and um, the architect Latrobe was down there, and he went to a dance, and he said, "This is annoying f um, musician up here calling out the figures to the quadrilles, and this is just not right." And within a few years, in the 1820s, there are other references as far north as uh, New York State and other places in the South uh, where there are references to black black fiddlers calling out the dance figures at public dances. By the 1840s, 50s, they're white people doing it too. And by mid-century, the dance manuals are giving instructions on how to prompt quadrilles. And the dancing masters, of course, didn't like it because it was going to put them out of business. Once, once you could call the dances, dancers didn't have to go to school anymore. And it let the dances pass, un, you know, just out into the countryside, 
and they could be spread through the folk tradition. You didn't have to have the dancing masters. And so what this did was it, it, it made the dances more impromptu, improvisational, which is in the African dance, music and dance tradition. And it really separated them from the European tradition. And to me, the, the dance calling, which is African-American, is the single biggest ingredient that separated, the, you know, made this an American dance form as opposed to a European dance form. And there were black fiddlers in New Hampshire I could, uh, in the 1700s. And, and uh, uh, you know, there was slavery in New England. So there were slave fiddlers in New England as well as the South. And they were playing for the dancing schools. So obviously they were, and they were playing for the dances. Um, they were around these dances. They, and this is happening in the Caribbean too. There's, we talk about the Caribbean quadrilles same thing happened there, uh, where there's uh, slaves who are doing the European country dances and quadrilles and have, have basically adopted that. And, but the slaves were not sent to dancing school. So the only way they could do these if somebody's sh prompting them, shouting out the figures at, while they're doing the dances. So the early calling is African Americans calling for their people Sure. In settings like that, but then starting to, to call at at white at white events. True, and and the reaction of the whites, in particular, visiting Europeans, was this is not right. This is not the way it should be done. And the dancing masters were saying, "We hope this will go away soon," but it didn't. It caught on. Um, and, and to me, that's that's the biggest secret about these dances. And and when you think about it, it's it's the ba the African banjo is what transformed the music and made our fiddle music American as a, as a, you know, it's not, it's no longer British fiddle music, but it's American. Um, and, and frankly, if you, if you think about, if you were to list the different kinds of music and dance that are really truly American, what would you think of? Think of uh, jazz, blues, rock and roll, tap dance, bluegrass, bluegrass and they all have black influence. So it, it, it made me think, well, it's, it's, you know, these square dances we think of as American, and uh, they are an American dance form, and what, what makes them American and sets them apart from the European dances is the black influence. The thing about the, the black square dance calling, I just, you know, just as a, um, I, sh I should say, it, it's, this is what I say the evidence suggests. You know, I have no, I have no proof but um, it, it, sir, I've done a lot of research, and this is certainly what it looks like. And if someone can find an example of a white collar that precedes these black collars, I'd, I'd love to hear about it. But I, I, haven't, I haven't seen it yet. Um, you know, surely the dancing masters prompted their students, but that's different than calling out the figures spontaneously at a dance.